Hi there, welcome to another episode of Faces of DM, uh, our DM25 uh, DM TV segment that uh, brings you uh, our members uh, so you get to know a little bit more about their stories and what it is that got them involved in our movement. Um, essentially, it's about the stories of those that came across DM25 that were inspired by the movement's message and got engaged with the project as activists on the ground. Um, and today, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome um, somebody that I have known for many years, somebody that has been involved with DM for many, for a very long time, since the very beginning, when we launched in 2016. Uh, her name is Claire Delstorch. Claire, hi there. Welcome to Faces of DM. Oui, da David. Uh, we met uh, for the first time uh, nearly six years ago. Uh, in the first uh, days of DM uh, 25. Yeah, it's been it's been a really long time, and it's it's you know we've, from that very beginning when uh, when we met up until now we've gone through so much in terms of the activities that we've done together in Belgium and, and even beyond that that I think it was a really good opportunity to also present you to the to the membership at large um, because you've been active for a very long time even before DM your political activism did not begin with DM obviously, and uh, I just wanted to, to ask you maybe a couple of questions about that. Uh, first of all, if you can tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, where you come from and, um, and so on, and then we'll go on to talk a little bit more about the, the, the political activism that you've started mm -hmm. way before DM even started in 2016. So yeah, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself first. Yes, thank you. Uh, oh, I'm very old. I was born during the first, uh, the, no, 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 the, the second uh, world war. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I have always been a, a street activist. Uh, when I was uh, uh, on the age of two, uh, I was already in the street uh, with my mother uh, collecting uh, money for the Red Cross, uh, for the victims of bombings uh, on Brussels. And my mother had to help me to uh, to hold the books. Uh, at the age of three, I was uh, in the street to welcome the British army. But uh, more seriously, uh, in the years uh, 50s, yes, I uh, participated in uh, the, the anti-nuclear marches. Uh, uh, many young, young people were very interested, and uh, I began uh, really uh, an activist uh, uh, later with uh, decolonization of the Congo and with the Vietnam War. I have a very inter international family uh, um, with people coming from uh, all over Europe and uh, from other continents too. And my family has been uh, involved in a lot of uh, historical uh, events of the um, events of the 20th century, the two world wars, the, the war in Spain, um, the Stalinist um, trials, uh, the resistance, uh, the um, yes, the um, Carnation Revolution in uh, Portugal, events uh, in Haiti, and uh, even uh, Rwandan uh, genocide. My family in law. I was teacher. I've been teacher for uh, a long time, uh, and uh, as a teacher, because I was te I was uh, teaching uh, history and uh, social sciences. I uh, had opportunity to do green classes and to make a change with uh, other schools, uh, with Germans, with English, with Danish, with Soviet uh, schools. Uh, uh, and I had uh, many opportunities to uh, travel, uh, not only in Europe, but uh, around the world. 
you mentioned uh, so many things already. You know, it's it's uh, incredible how how much you've lived, you know, and how much you've seen, and not just politically, but in terms of how the world has evolved, you know, from the the sixties onwards, even, you know, and so mm -hmm. on. Um, don't you? I mean, nowadays sometimes people think that hope is gone. There's no hope for change, and yet. You know, you, you've you've seen so much, and yet you're still active in the polit trying to change things politically, trying to make a difference to people's lives. Because let's face it, that's the reason why uh, people like you and I have been involved with with movements um, like DM25. Mm -hmm. um, but after everything, after all these movements that you've seen come and go in the past, and including the 1960, the, the hope of 1968. You know that that era that now people look back and, and say, well, that was the moment that things could have really taken a turn for the best. And, um, and now, you know, we see with the onset of financialization, neoliberalism, we see more or less what, what happened to that hope that it was eventually destroyed um, by this system that we, we have in place now, which, you know, we, at DM25 and including Yanis Varoufakis calls techno-feudalism in the sense that we no longer seem to live in a kind of capitalist mm -hmm. society. It's uh, it's actually gone beyond that. Um, mm -hmm. So so uh, my question to you is, I remember being s s sat with you when when the Nuit Debout protests were happening in Brussels, and I don't know if you were joking or not, but I remember a comment that you made, which was that you know back in 1968, uh, the, the the youth at the time was far less um motivated far less active than today and maybe you were joking about that but it really put some perspective into into you know my own understanding of of the world and my understanding of politics and activism so i mean how would you you know how, why how come you're still active after so long do you do you i guess you still have some you know hope that things can indeed change right can you tell us oh, a yes. bit more about that <laughs> yes i witnessed the uh, a lot of uh events uh, uh, in the years of 60s, uh, the, the big uh, strike uh, in 60-61. Uh, 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 and I began to work uh, at school in a region uh, with coal mines, and uh, all coal mines uh, closed, uh, of course. Uh, I uh, took part in 68. Uh, um, uh, the the workers, the, the social movement, uh, uh, stepped into the breach uh, opened by the students' uh, movement. And there is a big difference because uh, since 1968, uh, uh, the society is more open, less authoritarianist. We, we gain some, uh, some freedom, that's true. But I witnessed a, a very strange phenomenon. Uh, I was uh, already a teacher, and um, my pupils, when I was a student, uh, we had no money in uh, average, of course, but we had no money, no money to go to a pub to discuss uh, um, all these restaurants uh, not far from the university in Brussels, they didn't uh, exist. And if we wanted to uh, discuss, uh, we did it in the street, uh, in the corridors of the university, or uh, when the, the weather was good uh, on the lawn of the park. Um, and my pupil, pupils, it was just like uh, as, as uh, if uh, the consumer, consumer society um, took them uh, uh, what exactly? Uh, they, yes, they were uh, the generation of uh, '68 was uh, against uh, consumer society. Uh, they attacked uh, it, and uh, some uh, years later, my students uh, they often had uh, motorbikes, so uh, they had to. Uh, they, they must uh, uh, pay for. Um, for petrol, and uh, after the school day, uh, they immediately uh, run to the supermarket to do a student job and to to get money. So they were. Uh, it it was as if the society had recuper recuperated them. Uh, a very yeah. strange thing. 
Yeah, it's it's interesting that you say that because it uh, that that same hope, you know, you mentioned the Carnation Revolution of the country that mm -hmm. I come from in Portugal. We also had the situation in Spain in the 70s with uh, the fall of Franco mm -hmm. and uh, what in Madrid they called La Movida Madrilena, uh, <laughs> where was there was a kind of moment of um, of uh, emancipation. It was a moment of uh, hedonistic hedonistic experience. It was a moment of you know finally breaking free from this authoritarian grasp of the political system and being kind of swallowed up in many ways uh, by by the capitalist system at the time. You know, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. it's what you're saying now reminds me of of what happened also. Um, elsewhere, because it wasn't just an isolated incident in Belgium, you know, as as you as you very well know, and so it's uh, you're right. I think that it has kind of created um, th this hope for transformation that people would somehow um, transform and become politically engaged and active all of a sudden, in a way that the capitalist system swallowed that up and, as you said, mm -hmm. recuperated them um, into into I guess consumers in many in many instances and. And because people were precarious, they also needed jobs, they needed to make a living, they needed to survive, right? They, they had to find a way through which to make, to put bread on the table mm -hmm. for their children. And so it's, um, it's kind of an, um, an ironic um, situation where right? you get your freedom, so to speak, from authoritarianism. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you get swallowed up by another system that actually takes mm -hmm. away the freedom that you need because you're condemned mm -hmm. to basically working uh, all the time for you know, slave wage, slave wages, almost in many instances. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think uh, you know. But sorry, I interrupted you. I, I go on. No, I, no, I, no. Just wanted to add a no. So uh, I have, um, I've been, of course, as a, a teacher in a, in a union, and I'm so old, but uh, I'm still member of the union because uh, I think it's a, a significant. Uh, it's significant, but I've never been member of a party. Uh, of course, I know people uh, and I have friends in a, in a lot of parties, but um, <laughs> let let us see. Uh, uh, you have take the the liberals. They are right um, wing, uh, right wingers, of course. Uh, so uh, it didn't interest me. Uh, uh, you know, yes, in every party you have uh, good people and you have sometimes uh, gangsters, uh, sometimes in the same uh, parties. Uh, if you take the liberals, uh, I think we can do something with them. Uh, I'll uh, speak it about uh, later, because they are defending uh, uh, freedom uh, and, uh, yes, uh, freedom of the citizen against uh, uh, Powerful, uh, um, try to do for su surveillance. Uh, so I can, I think we can do something with them, but uh, it's their right wing, uh, their social politics uh, uh, didn't interest me, of course. Uh, social Democrats, uh, yes, but uh, uh, they, they were for the NATO. Uh, uh, this is the um, Sustained uh, uh, colonial policies uh, uh, long ago, and now uh, austerity uh, policies. Uh, the same situation for the Greens. Uh, the Greens they have the great merit to have put forward, uh, forward the the climate uh, problems, but uh, they have no social politics. Uh, they have. Um, uh, they are now in the governments in Belgium, social democrats, liberals, uh, um, greens together, and they are okay with the with the austerity politics. So, when I was young, of course, I was uh, close to the communist, uh, uh, and um, <laughs> something I didn't like. Uh, it was the sectarianism sectarianism because uh, i was member of a lot of uh, movements uh, movement uh, against war and so on and i was excluded uh, of uh, movements uh, so called uh, mass movements because of disagreements inside the communist party which i was no member <laughs> uh, I had fun with that, of course, but uh, in other countries and in other times, uh, it, it would uh, lead to the, the 
far uh, spread. So uh, I've never me been a member of uh, of any party. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, that's interesting because you know you like like you were so political and you've been so engaged for such a long time as mm -hmm. we've been discussing, and yet uh, there was never a political party that really spoke to you, spoke no. to your heart, spoke to your mind as to no. the kind of things that need happening. And I think you're right in your assessment that there, uh, the the current you know the the social the so-called social democrats and in Portugal in the social democrats when they came when they started out um, and. They were when they, you know, in the 1970s after the revolution, uh, it was funny how they they were the posters, their propaganda. It said for the people, for the land, and something else. I don't remember. I mean, this is the same political party that implemented the brutal austerity measures, you know, less than 30 years later uh, on on Portugal, and which hurt and led to the, you know, hundreds of thousands of Portuguese young people leaving the country in search of job security elsewhere, of which my family was um, a part. And um, so it's, 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 it's strange how that, even though we have parties that are called socialist parties, parties that are called social democrats, there's, it's just in name because there's nothing socialist, there's nothing democratic mm -hmm. even in many instances about those political parties. And uh, same goes for the Greens. You know, the Greens, they, ha they happen to have the, the, mm -hmm. the Green label, they're, they're called the Green Party. And, um, and so they are benefiting from the green wave that is running throughout Europe uh, and has been happening across uh, Europe for and also mm -hmm. the world for a long time, especially now with the Fridays for Future protests. So they've benefited politically from that. But when you look deeper into it, as you were saying, you realize that they actually don't have any real deep transnational program for change, which is actually system changing. Um, you know, they disagree with each other on a key number of, 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 of policies, even within Europe. And not to mention beyond this, beyond our continent that we happen to live in. So it's, um, you know, I, I I agree with you. I tell, I share your 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 concern about the fact, and I, also because I was never a member of any political party either, you know. And uh, it's for the same reasons that you've described. Mm -hmm. I'm, although I'm obviously younger and than than you mm -hmm. are, and I've experienced far less uh, of the world than than you have. Um, but so that. So I, I get what you what what your position is on this very much so because it's, like I said it's part of my experience as well. Mm -hmm. um, but then, what, what happened then? Because then DM was created in two thousand sixteen after all this. And how how is it that you joined DM? Why did you join DM? What, what was it about DM <laughs> that that interested you? That uh, said, okay, actually, I think it's time for me now to join something. Maybe it's a long story because uh, uh, long before. Uh, I have always been interested in uh, international uh, movements, uh, not especially European, uh, but uh, international. And um, in the years, uh, in the years 90, uh, 90s, yes, uh, it was uh, maybe the saddest uh, period of my life because um, it, it was the war in Yugoslavia. I woke up in the morning uh, thinking uh, the Belgian Air Force is bombing Belgrade. It was terrible. And uh, I did what I, uh, what I was able to do. It was nothing, uh, signature here, a demonstration there. And it was impossible to demonstrate with the, with the French speaking Greek because oh, they, they, were, they had no position. Uh, the, only uh, opportunity for me was to work with the, the Flemish Greens because they were the only ones to have some decency about uh, Yugoslavia. And then uh, it was the war in, in uh, Iraq. Iraq. The first war in Iraq, uh, I've never felt so powerless in my whole life because uh, when it was war in Vietnam, we were very active. But uh, we were movements everywhere in the world, chiefly in the United States, of course, because the young men uh, uh, who didn't want to go to the, the war, they burned their military papers. And we were all together and we had the feeling to can, uh, to can have an influence on the events. But uh, when it was the first uh, Iraq uh, war, nothing. Uh, I remember the ultimatum uh, 
uh, I just left a Syrian friend, a doctor. He was uh, back to uh, Syria, and he didn't know if uh, the war will uh, spread to the, the, the whole Middle East, uh, and if he will be uh, mobilized. And uh, I was at uh, home. Uh, it was the eve before the ultimatum, and I walked toward my school, uh, uh, listening to Mozart Requiem. It was uh, horrible. And then there was the second uh, uh, Iraq war. It was the first uh, years of the ninety, the, <laughs> the um, seven. No, <laughs> it was uh, in uh, two thousand four. Yes, the, the second uh, oh, war. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. and uh, three, three or four. Yes, three. And um, young people became to uh, wake. To work up. And uh, we had uh, sometimes uh, we were calling uh, to uh, each other on the uh, cell phones. Uh, and uh, on Sunday, we have been 70,000 people in the streets in Brussels against the war. That was on Sunday. But Monday, there was nothing more, nothing, because we had no organization. So it's uh, a good thing to have people uh, demonstrating in the, in the streets. But if we have no organization, we can do nothing. We can have no influence. And for me, it was something very, very significant. Uh, and then, uh, yes, I was not uh, so much interested in Europe. Uh, as a teacher, yes, because uh, I had to uh, speak about uh, uh, the European Union, of course. And I went to the uh, European Parliament with my pupils uh, every year, every year, uh, sometimes with uh, foreign students uh, uh, in Brussels for an exchange. So, yes, uh, but uh, I was not so much uh, interested. And then came the year uh, 15 and the uh, Euro crisis, the Greek crisis. <laughs> it, was, it was something terrible. Um, a tsunami in my life. Uh, maybe I can explain uh, with a... <laughs> with a yes, we can see it. <laughs> picture. It's a picture. I was uh, demonstrating with uh, friends uh, and a boat. It was... Uh, uh, European Union jungle uh, where might makes right. Let us change it. And it's exactly why uh, I went, uh, I joined the uh, M25. I needed exactly the M25. And um, I remember it was the day of the Greek referendum, a Sunday. And my uh, neighbor uh, called me and she told me, uh, oh, uh, the result is very good. And it was happiness. And on the um, Monday, uh, I uh, knew uh, uh, Yanis Varoufakis uh, had resigned. And I understood everything immediately. What was going on? What would happen? Uh, and I was in a, in a deep sadness and anger. And I remember I uh, went to um, a bookshop and I bought uh, the Global Minotaur and I began to read it uh, uh, sitting on the steps of the stock exchange because I had an appointment with um, an African friend. And it was an enlightenment. The, the answer to a question I was asking to me, uh, to myself uh, since uh, 30 years, I began to understand uh, a lot of things because uh, so complex uh, concept, economic concept, very complex. Uh, he explains with an uh, incredible uh, pedagogy. And I was able to understand. Uh, uh, and then, of course, I followed uh, Yanis Varoufakis uh, on Twitter. And uh, I was one of the first. Uh, to join Gen 25 uh, on 9 February uh, 16. <laughs> wow, that's uh, what, oh, what, a, <laughs> <laughs> what a journey, Claire. It's uh, it's amazing how, despite the fact that um, there's so much, I feel like there's so much in common in, in a way between 
everything that you're telling me because I, I can and, and my own experience because I, I you know for me it was very similar in the, as well this because I was in um, I was in England at the time I was living there and have been in England for 11 years um, or 10 years by this point um, and, and then I left to come to Brussels but during this time, you know, early 2010s, um, up until 2015, as you mentioned, with the the capitul the U-turn, the huge capitulation of Syriza, which really destroyed the hopes of so many people, not only in Greece, but everywhere across Europe. People were looking at Greece as, as an example of how to confront power, how to confront an inane establishment, which is not interested in the in what's good for people, but more interested in what's good for private interests and the banks, because that's essentially what happened. Um, and I saw my own government, you know, um, pushing through the, some of the harshest austerity measures that the country had ever seen since the 1974 revolution, you know, since the since that, that moment of hope that was created. And when I saw this example, like, you, like you're referencing, you know, in, in Greece, and then I saw that referendum result, um, by that point, I was already living in, um, I, I was about to move to, 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 to Brussels, if I'm not mistaken. And it was really like a stab in the heart, you know, it was, it really felt like all that hope, everything that, that, that possibility for change suddenly had evaporated. And, and so when DM was created like six months later <laughs> on the February 9th, I too was very excited about it. And um, and I couldn't believe all the, the people that were involved, you know, in, 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 the, in the movement at the time, you know. And I thought, wow, this is exactly what Europe needs. This is what we need to be doing. And it seemed just like the obvious way out, you know. It seemed like the obvious solution. And, you know, for somebody like you who's, you know, lived for so long and have experienced so much, and for you to have that same experience and same thought that I was having, even though, you know, I was, let's say, beginning my proper political activism, if you like, um, it really, it says something, right? It says something about the fact that this is something that uh, what we're experiencing today, um, it doesn't matter what age you are, it doesn't matter what background mm -hmm. you, you, know, you come from, it's all about this shared experience that we're all actually being screwed, if you like, by uh, the powers that be, the powerful, and um, that the, in, you know, we have to come together but like you said earlier, we need organization. Mm -hmm. Without organization, protest is just not going to get us anywhere. It's just good symbolically, but we really need to get together. We need to organize. We need to come up with a plan because, if anything, what we've learned from the last 20 years with all the Occupy, the Occupy movement, the, the Nuit des mm -hmm. the uh, Arab Spring Revolutions in the Middle East, it's not enough to just be against something. We need to be for something and we need to bring people together around that common objective. Uh, if, if we don't do that, I think we will always fail. Um, that's the sad truth of it. So, so you know, thank you for telling us about your, uh, about how you joined DM. I mean, maybe let's talk a little bit about um, what you've done in DM. Um, you know, what is it about DM that appeals to you? Uh, you know, what do you find that is the most exciting things about the movement? Mm -hmm. You know, what what have you learned out of it? I mean, it's or yeah, what 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 have you gotten out of the movement? You know, and and what do you see? Where do you see us going? What do you think is needed now to to really change Europe? Do you think that our original mission is still a worthwhile pursuit? You know, tell us a bit maybe about that and some of the policies mm -hmm. or, or ideas that you think are are we should be talking about more in DM. Yes, uh, we met uh, for the first uh, time, uh, you remember, it was uh, on April uh, 16, uh, in the year 16. Uh, uh, it was uh, um, in a co-working gallery. Gallery is a theater in the center of uh, Brussels, and we were maybe 60, uh, around 60. Uh, a lot of people are still uh, working together, like you and me and uh, Eric. Uh, uh, others, they came uh, uh, because they were interested by the manifesto and by uh, the character, the transnational and uh, uh, yes, international uh, character of uh, M25. Uh, some of them uh, uh, came uh, to see, but uh, we uh, we have uh, contact with them uh, because uh, they are activists in other organizations. Uh, 
And the first uh, thing we did, I remember we had a meeting in the center of Brussels, uh, in open uh, space, and we um, we had we participated in a participated in a demonstration against uh, the purchase of uh, new uh, warplanes by the Belgian government, and we had some uh, activities against uh, TTIP and against uh, austerity politics. Uh, um, I think it was a, a good uh, a good way to begin, uh, and later we we uh, worked uh, to work to uh, um, to have a program the Green New Deal. Uh, it was a long uh, work, but uh, I think it was a very good uh, thing to have this program and to go to the for the first time to the European elections with. Uh, 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 common agenda for all Europe. It was the first time uh, we, uh, yes, we had a million and a half uh, uh, people uh, voting for us. Uh, it was only a beginning, of course, um, but uh, it was the first time we had a, a program for everybody in, in Europe, for all countries. And uh, maybe we'll, uh, we will uh, have a look. Uh, on the new uh, work uh, gatherings, people's gatherings, uh, because it's to uh, to put the local struggles to um, a European level. That's what uh, we did uh, from the beginning. Of course, for me, it was uh, very uh, very interesting to have uh, to be in touch with. Uh, a lot of uh, people uh, across uh, Europe. Uh, uh, I'm uh, every day in touch with people from uh, a lot of uh, countries because we have the the DSCs, not only the local DSCs, but the thematic DSCs. And I'm in a thematic DSC about uh, migration with uh, Travis, who is uh, very tireless. Uh, and uh, I'm in, uh, yes, in um, health, uh, health um, DSC, public health. And there is a very, very uh, active group in uh, Italy. On, on, not only in Italy, but uh, they have a very active group. I'm working uh, with uh, Trello. Trello is a product, uh, a translation uh, team. And uh, for translation, of course, I work uh, chiefly with uh, French pe French speaking people, but uh, we have uh, sometimes uh, Zoom calls with uh, people of uh, everywhere and speaking uh, all languages. It's very, very uh, interesting because my son is living in uh, Sweden. Uh, he uh, became a Swedish with his family. And um, I attended uh, already um, meetings in uh, Stockholm uh, of the uh, Swedish uh, DSC. So this uh, pan-European um, character is uh, very, very uh, interesting for me. We used, uh, now with the pandemic, uh, we have uh, chiefly uh, call, um, Zoom calls, of course, but uh, we were used to go in uh, different uh, town, uh, cities, capitals in Europe. Uh, we met in, uh, in Amsterdam, in Paris, in Berlin, in Rome, uh, in Prague, uh, and uh, Athens. Uh, and it uh, strengthened the, the friendship uh, uh, among the, the demos. Uh, for me, it's uh, something very uh, important. I remember when we uh, went to um, to uh, Rome. It was in uh, seven, seventeen. Uh, there was a demonstration uh, in Rome, and uh, we came uh, on. Uh, I don't remember which uh, day, but uh, on the evening uh, we had me uh, only uh, a drink. Uh, uh, we had a drink on the on the terrace uh, in a pub, in a big pub in uh, Rome, and it was the first time I met uh, the people of uh, Belgrade and uh, Zagreb, 
And I will never, never in my life uh, forget uh, this evening. Um, the Serbian were, um, it was a big group, and uh, there was a man a little older than the others, and he told me I joined uh, the M25 because uh, I've seen the disintegration of Yugoslavia, and I fear the same uh, uh, thing for uh, Europe. And I saw he was right. And these um, Serbian friends, they were very, very, uh, very sympathetic. And uh, when we demonstrated uh, in Rome, the Serbians and the Croats, they were together with their flags, the flags of the DSC, DSC Zagreb, DSC Belgrade, always together, friendly. And I was deeply moved because their parents were in war um, against each other. Uh, it has been a, a horrible war. And these young people, uh, they, were, they, belie they were believing in a, a better world and struggling by, uh, for a better world. Uh, I was uh, very, very uh, moved uh, by the, these uh, uh, people. It was uh, funny, uh, you remember in Rome, uh, it was very funny because we had two demonstrations. Uh, one was blue. Uh, they were the people of uh, with a different of start and people uh, uh, liking uh, the European Union like uh, it is uh, without any question. And uh, we had another demonstration was with uh, with uh, only uh, red and green uh, for another Europe, um, an Europe, uh, uh, a social Europe, a democratic Europe. And the um, Roman authorities uh, uh, had managed to separate uh, carefully the two uh, demonstrations. But uh, uh, when the dislo dislocation uh, came, um, people from the, the two uh, processions, uh, uh, the blues, the, the green, the reds, uh, we were uh, together. And the carabinieri were so... Uh, uh, afraid, uh, they uh, begin to run to separate us, but we had no intention to uh, fight uh, um, and uh, lesser intention to demolish Rome because there are wounds in the sin Rome. It was a, a very interesting experience. And in the um, afternoon, uh, we had a big uh, meeting with uh, demons from everywhere in Europe. Uh, and then uh, we launched a new deal uh, on the evening. Um, yes, this uh, European uh, transnational character is a uh, very, very uh, significant you're, for you're, me. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right, Claire. And uh, thanks for reminding me of some of those moments because, you know, when you you tend to to kind of forget these things unless you you know take your mind back a bit and remember all the things that we've actually been doing. And, um, you know, you're totally right about this existence of these people, like the Giver of Stats of this world, uh, that simply wave the EU flag as if to say the European Union is great and we should keep it. And our point, and I think this is what demarcates DM from almost basically everybody else, is to say that, yes, we like the, we like the idea, the concept of a European Union, but the problem is that right now it resembles more a European disunion um, than anything else. And waving the European Union flag is just not enough. You have to go beyond that. You have to say, okay, what kind of European Union do we want? You know, what kind of, you know, do we want a European Union that is essentially signing deals with Turkey in order to make sure that Turkey does not allow refugees to enter? The, Euro the European Union space, if you like, do we, is that the kind of European Union we want? Do we want the European Union that is, you know, shooting at migrants and refugees world, you know, drowning in the Mediterranean? Is that the kind of European Union that, that we want? It's not the kind of European Union that I want and certainly not the kind of European Union that you want, Claire. Um, is, you know, do we want a European Union that is, you know, benefiting bankers and bailing them out where, whilst at the same time imposing, you know, criminal austerity measures on the poorest of the poor and, you know, increasing the numbers of homeless, homeless people living in our continent? That's not the kind of European Union that I want. So, you know, when I see these, you know, centrists, the extreme centrists, you know, waving the European Union flag as if 
this is going to this European Union that we have now is the epitome of of the best possible of your of European unions that we could ever have. It's really a slap in the face to everybody that is you know struggling to make the, to make ends meet, you know, to to make sure that their children have food on the table and, and so on. So I think that what 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 you've said about the the transnational character of DM um, by itself is already important. But on top of that, the kinds of things that we're fighting for, the kind of European Union you know, with the universal basic dividend, with um, the a, a trans you know transformative Green New Deal for Europe, with all the other policies that we have in terms of housing, in terms of you know uh, my, my you know ensuring the um, well-being of, of new arrivals from outside of the European Union space and everything else. I think that's the kind of project that is worth fighting for. And, you know, it's really a pleasure that you're in it, that I'm in it, that we're all in it together, really, uh, to try and make that difference. So, you know, but maybe you can say, before we wrap it up, I just wanted to ask you maybe to, to say a few words about, because we, we often talk about the universal basic dividend, you know, and sometimes it's, it's difficult for, we don't necessarily always explain it, as we should. So maybe I was wondering, you know, if you could, what do you think about it? You know, what, what do you think about the universal basic dividend? And also, I want to then talk to you a little bit about what's going on in Belgium right now. And also, mm -hmm. we'll end we'll end a little afterwards on uh, what's going on in terms of your of of you know what you've been what the kind of activism we've been doing in supporting Julian mm -hmm. Assange, and also because you've been very involved in, with that. So, and I would like to to hear from you a little mm -hmm. bit about that. But yeah, if you can just tell us a bit about about the universal basic dividend to begin with. And then we'll, we'll move on to the rest. I think uh, universal basic dividend is uh, uh, very interesting because I uh, know with uh, uh, artificial uh, intelligence uh, and the new technologies, uh, many jobs uh, will disappear. Uh, of course, I am not a... Yes, there is a problem with uh, technology, uh, but uh, it's another problem we'll discuss uh, later. Um, Many people uh, will uh, lost, uh, will lose, will lose, uh, lose their jobs, and uh, universal basic dividend is uh, very interesting for them. Uh, now we see uh, with the pandemic crisis, uh, a lot of people are richer than ever, of course, but uh, you have all these people uh, with a little restaurant, cafe. Uh, they are bankrupt or they will be bankrupt. Uh, the cultural sector is uh, devastated. Uh, and you have a lot of people living uh, uh, living uh, on, uh, on the margins. Uh, they, are, they have odd jobs, uh, uh, sometimes uh, partly uh, moonlighting. Uh, and all these people, uh, they, a lot of people don't uh, get uh, uh, benefits for unemployment. You have, uh, of course, uh, these benefits uh, when you are uh, a worker. And if you have a, a self-employed, self because uh, there is, a, yes, there are allowances for the, these people, but you have other people without, uh, without anything. Uh, so uh, we, there is a big threat to see uh, more uh, homeless people in the streets. Uh, and uh, you are um, right about uh, uh, migrants because uh, how is it possible to think uh, we can live so uh, with uh, homeless uh, people uh, sleeping in the street, with a uh, migrant... Uh, uh, Pushing uh, no, um, a lot of uh, migrants um, they are not accepted in uh, in um, in Europe uh, and uh, the yes Europe is uh, paying uh, Turkey to to keep them. We have no memory. Uh, my parents in uh, forty. Uh, they were refugees and they were uh, taken in by a French family and we are still uh, friends uh, with this family. Uh, if uh, today, today, uh, if we have a big accident in a, a nuclear power plant in uh, Belgium, in the little Belgium, all Belgians can be refugees. Uh, people don't think about uh, 
so yes, we need uh, something else, uh, another another Europe, uh, public uh, social welfare centers are no. Uh, uh, full because uh, yes, and they are students. Uh, they were relying on a, a little job uh, to live. Uh, so we have many, many people. Uh, um, it's necessary to to uh, to find a solution for them. And I think a universal basic dividend uh, is uh, is uh, a very good uh, idea. Of course, no uh, dividend and uh, not. Uh, um, funding uh, by taxes. Uh. Yeah, that's right. Because uh, there's there's something which is important to clarify. And there's uh, the idea of a universal basic income. It's it's not something new. It's been go. It's been around for quite a long time. And yet, you, you now we even see the liberals and the right wingers um, yes. advocating advocating for one. Uh, but the you know you know and people are like, wow, this is it's so great. But then you look deeper mm -hmm. into it and you realize that when they're advocating for universal basic income, what they're really saying, you know, in small print is that we will cut the welfare state, mm. you know, and you will have this. So, you know, you, mm. so basically it's just a replacement. It's not an actual income uh, at all. And on top of that, you know, as, as you've said, and as people can check out on our website as well, the dividend part of our, you know, you know the, why the reason why we call it universal basic dividend is because it's not meant to be funded through taxation. You know, that's not the the purpose of it. The, and you can find more about it in the description of the video of the, this video uh, if you want to know more about how we actually would implement a universal basic dividend and how we would fund it tomorrow morning without raising any taxes whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, maybe Claire, we can talk a little bit about Belgium. You know, a little bit yes. future, future perspectives. You know, what's going on in Belgium right now? What do you see the future in the, in this country? Where 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 is there any hope of things transforming, things changing? Um, and um, how you know? And also, as I said earlier, in terms of your engagement with uh, supporting Julian Assange, like we've been doing at DM Twenty Five since the very beginning, is a member of our advisory panel um, as well. Um, and he's still, you know, now for two years, he's been in prison at Belmarsh. Um, tell us a little bit about your activism here in Belgium and, and yeah, your future perspectives about the mm -hmm. future of, of politics and the future of, of this country. Yes, uh, Belgium is a very complicated country. Uh, we have, uh, it's not a, a Belgian problem. We can uh, find that uh, everywhere, not only in Europe, but um, with the Islamic uh, uh, terrorism threat and with the pandemic, the governments uh, used uh, this, uh, these things uh, to concentrate more and more, not exactly power, but a power of uh, control and surveillance on uh, people. Uh, I uh, feel it very much because I left, uh, I, 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 yes, uh, I was uh, in um, a more uh, free uh, uh, society, uh, and now uh, the, the surveillance is very, very close. Uh, I feel it uh, every day uh, on the computer, on the phone, uh, on the streets, uh, uh, in the metro, everywhere. Uh, Belgium uh, has a lot of uh, reforms, state reforms, uh, since uh, uh, a long time now, because uh, in Belgium we have uh, two regions, uh, not only uh, different linguistically, but also politic no, not politically, uh, economically and uh, socially. Uh, they are different uh, parts in Belgium and we try to uh, to do uh, a better state uh, to reform and to federalize it but uh, the problem is we uh, we uh, have a terrible inefficiency uh, so how to be more efficient but not too authoritarian that's a, a big problem uh, uh, no uh, because yes we are inefficiency because uh, who is responsible for what? That's a problem. Uh, is it the region? Is it the commune? Is it the state? Uh, 
in, uh, in uh, public health, uh, for example, uh, uh, sometimes people working uh, for public health in hospitals, uh, they are crazy because uh, they don't know uh, uh, who is responsible, and that's a big problem. But uh, um, if we concentrate, it's uh, not exactly the same to be efficient. We can be efficient and not uh, too authoritarian. Uh, but in Belgium, uh, some uh, weeks ago, uh, uh, we uh, we read in the new in a newspaper that all uh, data of the Belgians were uh, put uh, together uh, about health, about uh, fiscal uh, things, about uh, social uh, uh, benefits, and everything. And the minister, who is the uh, brother of uh, Charles Michel, uh, president of the uh, Council, uh, the European Council. Uh, he was, uh, yes, he told, oh, I am uh, very surprised. I read it in the newspaper. I don't know. Oh, okay, we'll stop it immediately. Uh, but there are only uh, some civil servants uh, who did it without any uh, mandate of the government and without uh, any uh, legal frame. Yes, okay. <laughs> Uh, that's a big problem for Belgium and for everybody. Uh, I'm not against the new technologies, of course, but uh, it's always the same problem with technology. Uh, technology it, it itself, uh, it's something very interesting and very, uh, it's a progress. But we can use it uh, uh, to against the many or for the many. Uh, it has always been so. And we uh, in a in a problem like this, no, uh, we can use it uh, only uh, as it is uh, uh, to and to, to um, let uh, Google and uh, Microsoft and so on uh, uh, become uh, more richer, and we can uh, use it uh, as a, a dividend uh, for everybody. Uh, Absolutely, I think it's uh, a very big problem of our time. No, uh, in Belgium we can. Uh, what can we do exactly? Uh, we can work with a lot of uh, people, with movements, of course, with the trade unions, uh, with uh, social movements, movements uh, uh, for peace, international movements, with uh, Oxfam, uh, with uh, housing uh, committees, with uh, health committees, and so on. Yes, of course, we can even work with political parties, uh, why not? But in my uh, view, only on specific uh, issues and keeping our independence, that's very significant. Always keep our independence. Uh, are we a movement? Yes, uh, the M25 is a movement, but we have a lot of problems now in Belgium uh, because, uh, yes, we uh, coalitions of uh, what they call civil society. Uh, in civil society, you have movements, you have uh, trade unions and so on, but no political parties. And sometimes uh, we are not accepted because um, we've been told, uh, oh, uh, in uh, Greece, you have a party, Mera, uh, so you are a party and uh, you are no part uh, of the civil society. And we had a lot of problems uh, recently uh, about that. Um, yeah, if I just may interrupt you for a second, Claire, it's very interesting what you're saying because, you know, the, 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 we're, the, we're different in that sense that we, you know, primarily we are a movement and we have what we call electoral wings and we have uh, an electoral wing, which is a political party in Greece called Meta 25, as uh, you've just mentioned, Claire. Um, and the, the thing is, it's a new, it's like we're a new thing, we're a new being, right? And on the one hand, you know, it's the movement that controls the party to a very large extent. Um, although, of course, the party is based on on legal and uh, national law in terms of uh, Greece. Um, but having said that, they're intertwined, they're interlinked. The There can be no matter without DM and vice versa. Uh, but DM is there and is the backbone of everything. And we're, a, you know, a political movement. Um, cultural movement as well that is trying to do politics differently but really do it differently not just say that we're doing it differently 
And uh, and there it, it has caused some confusion because, as you said, people are looking at us sometimes and they think, well, DM is a political party. And we're like, no, I mean, the very basis of everything that we do is as a movement, you know, to be out on the streets, to put pressure, to be subversive. And yes, when that change does not come from existing political parties, then yes, we will obviously do our very best to challenge those parties politically, you know, because we, you know, there's different avenues to change, right? You know, we, you have to keep putting pressure at all levels, um, not just uh, out on the streets, but also to do it in parliaments like we're doing right now with Meta25 and our nine members of parliament there in uh, mm. the Hellenic parliament. So it's a, it's a constant struggle, I find, to keep explaining this to, to, to other organizations, right? And you've experienced that um, quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But you see that yes. as actually, but you you see that that has impacted our, the, our development. Do you think, or you know, how do you think we can convince these political organi these organizations, these civil society organizations, that we're more than just a party and we're more than just a normal movement? It's very very difficult. Uh, you, I forgot to answer about uh, Assange. Yes, uh, I am as a, as a DIMA, of course, member of uh, the Free Assange Committee Belgium. Uh, we we are very active uh, uh, doing campaigns uh, for Assange. Uh, we uh, gather uh, thousands of signatures for a petition uh, for the British authorities. Every Monday we are in the street, uh, in the center of Brussels, uh, in front of uh, the British or sometimes the American embassy to uh, defend uh, Assange. And uh, the committee, in the committee we are, oh, it's a very friendly group, uh, uh, but uh, we are coming from different uh, um, Party, not parties, yes, sometimes parties. There are people uh, of parties. And we disagree uh, on a lot of things, but for Assange, we are all uh, on the same, uh, um, same point. And uh, uh, it's uh, working uh, very good. Uh, uh, next uh, Monday, we have uh, two actions. Uh, in Brussels, and uh, we have no problem uh, because uh, uh, some are Trotskyist and the other are uh, uh, Stalinists of, of the one. Uh, no, uh, everybody uh, is uh, working for Assange. I think it's a very good uh, example uh, uh, how to work together if we don't uh, uh, agree uh, on uh, other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. That there has to be there has to be uh, things that uh, that you know that are above any difference that they can be. Um, even if, because sometimes the differences they're so they're so they're not that significant. You know, the analysis is the same. Sometimes we differ about the solution um, mm -hmm. amongst the left. You know, and but there are instances, as you said, where actually collaboration can indeed happen. And I think the question of Assange is uh, is an important one that. Um, you know, we we've been DM. You know, we've been criticized for so long, but we all for supporting Assange. But we've always stuck by Assange because we always put our principles above everything else. You know, we're not in this for you know opportunistic political gain like some political organizations are. Um, and uh, we will stick by what we believe to be right. And we you know we're not going to budge and we're not going to commit a U-turn. And it's good if that other organizations can also sometimes do that um, on, on on key topics. And of course, the question of the the uh, of Assange, it's not just about the freedom of Assange himself, but it's about the future of the free press as well. Mm -hmm. um, of course. And I've been with you in some of these protests as well uh, back before the pandemic, and uh, and it was really nice to meet some of the people there. Um, just to let's but just you know, it's coming up to an hour. We we initially planned oh. to have a thirty minute conversations for those of you who are watching and uh, it turned out to, into an hour conversation so i hope you're still with us um but i just just to to leave just to put a final note to it and thank you very much claire for being part of this um i just wanted to ask you one last question which is you know for the young people of today for the people out there that are maybe sitting on their sofas they're maybe not even reading a book maybe they're just you know they're they're tired maybe from work they don't see any any 
any um, point in getting active. What would you say to them? You know, what would you say to them in this moment? Oh, what would you be your message to? to yes, what, and what you would be were, your message? <laughs> you were talking about the Greeks. I think our Greek uh, comrades are very inspiring because they are motivated. Uh, uh, I've been in attendance uh, for the creation of Mera in uh, uh, 18 and then uh, in 19 from <clears throat> the first May, um, <coughs> sorry, the first May party. Uh, we had a demonstration in Athens and we had uh, an opportunity to meet uh, the people who became the first uh, uh, members of parliament of Mera uh, in uh, July uh, two, two years ago. Uh, they are very inspiring because there are many young people uh, between them and um, they were in a so difficult uh, situation after uh, the government, the, the series of government, uh, re, uh, let uh, all the power to the Troika. It was uh, something terrible, and they they had uh, the courage to uh, to go and to to create uh, a new party. Uh, uh, of course, the situation is very different in uh, Belgium, but. Uh, uh, I think the examples are very uh, yes, inspiring for uh, us. Uh, we need, I think, we need uh, to demo democratize uh, Belgium and Europe and, uh, and uh, beyond, uh, because uh, we have this uh, surveillance problem. For me, it's uh, uh, very uh, important. We have uh, to to lead uh, social and uh, humanist uh, policy and uh, yes uh, i think it's not so necessary to uh, uh, to give uh, to give uh, advices to the young people because the young people they have so uh, vi they, they have vitality in them uh, um, they have this uh, courage they are young and they have the life uh, just uh, before they before them, uh, you know, in front of them, uh, I think uh, they have uh, the strength uh, uh, to struggle and uh, to every young people, maybe not individually, but uh, use uh, wants always to uh, have a, a better world. And uh, I have a big confidence to uh, to the young people. Uh, I think. Uh, they always uh, want to do uh, something better than the, than the old one. And I uh, want to uh, say uh, uh, something else. Uh, uh, working in uh, DiEM25, yes, I'm very old now, uh, but uh, uh, as uh, long as I have, uh, as it's uh, possible, I will uh, work enthusiastically for DiEM25. And uh, there is something. Uh, very uh, happy in the M25 is the quality for the quality of people uh, um, working uh, uh, to work with people uh, so idealistic so uh, uh, intelligent and so motivated uh, uh, it's a privilege first of course with uh, Yanis Varoufakis I think it's a privilege to work with a uh, people like that. Uh, and uh, yes, thank you to every dreamer. Uh, it's a, a wonderful uh, adventure. <laughs> thank you so much, Claire. Uh, I think I could say the same about you. It's, um, you know, the pleasure is all is all ours. It's the, the pleasure of the movement to have somebody in the movement like you and for being so motivated and so enthusiastic and so engaged in everything that, that you do. So thank you for that, really, from the bottom of my heart. And um, also for our friendship and for everything that we've done together. Um, it's really, you know, a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for coming on uh, Faces of DM. And for those of you watching, um, I hope you enjoyed this hour. It's, it's like I said, it was meant to be 30 minutes, but obviously the conversation got the better of us. Um, and uh, do come back. If you, if you are not yet a member of DM25, you can join. There's a link in the description of the video. And um, you know, also remember that we're 100% funded by membership donations, so we don't get any money from private interests. 
So if you manage to have some, you know, few euros that are, uh, you know, lying around that you could spare for our movement, um, you would be very grateful for that as well. And the link is also in the description of the video. Um, on that note, uh, Claire, thanks again. And um, carpe diem. Thank you. Carpe diem. <laughs> Ciao.